Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. In the last episode, we, uh, well, I don't know if we could say that we crashed the party at the Arendelle party house or if we saved it. But anyways, we did save the Count Darren, who is uh, waiting for us at the uh, Defender's Heart. And we will go pick him up after we have done this quest here. Uh, I think that is the only place we actually need a party member in the city now. Yes. So let's go and head down to the uh, Gwen Gwent. I haven't even played The Witcher 3 that much, so I don't know why I said Gwent. The Gwurm family mansion. Ah, there you are, at last. You certainly took your time. I thought perhaps you got lost on the way here. I was already already regretting not drawing you a map. Orgus's relief is palpable, even though his, even through his grousing. It is a tragedy to see one's house in such a sorry, sorry state, but I always had a few guards in my service, you know. I hope those blockheads died honorably and didn't simply flee at the first sign of danger. Orgus turns towards the corridor with a pensive expression on his face. My manor, you see, contains several items that are of great value to me. I wish to retrieve them before they are discovered by my fellow citizens, who in the current chaos seem to have taken to thieving and marauding like ducks to water. So, here's what I want you to do. Take a stroll through my house, peek into the rooms, and if you find anyone, kill them on the spot. And that'll teach any op other opportunists to stay away from Horgus Gwurm's manor. While I was standing here by the entrance, I could clearly hear all the sound of someone rooting around inside. Any possessions of mine you find in there, you can keep. It's all as good as lost to me anyway. When you are sure the house is empty, give me a signal from my study window. Leave a torch around or something like that. You can decide when you get there. This should be good. I'm always up for poking around a fancy mansion. What are these valuable items that they're worth risking your life by going back to the manor? Never you mind. I'm paying you to clear out the ruffians inside, not to ask questions. Orgus glares at you for a few seconds before dropping in his gaze. In any case, you will learn what this is all about just as soon as you clear the way to my study for me. So, restrain your curiosity for now. You're not coming in with me? The very notion! You think I hire guards to do my bidding? Just so I can put myself in danger along with them? No, no, no. I've taken on my fair share of risk already today. But all the same, you took the risk of coming here, even though you were well aware of the danger. But what is it that draws you here so strongly, like a moth to a flame? Camellia, that's enough. Oh, it seems I hit a sore spot. She quickly covers the smile that flits across her face. All right, I understand. Well, get on with it, or are you waiting for a special order? I shall await your signal. Chris pauses. And good luck in there, I suppose. Well, that was gracious of you, Horgus. How is the... I want her in the middle. Oh boy, I have a lot of people now. I need to... Um... So the animal companions, they have a rather... Okay. Uh... That's what we're going with. Is 
something wrong. Watch and learn. Okay, nobody here. Pretty sure there's someone in My there. My tail is restless. Can we retreat already? <laughs> yep. They even saw through my stealth. Every strike count. Do I have anything? Stab you, zap you. Why not both? Let's just kill him. Mind over muscle. This should do it. The spirits demand your blood. Into the fray! You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Distract them for me. Uldriff is really good at uh, melee. A lot better than... Uh, well, in my other uh, playthrough, I have him as... Um, ranged with two oh, throwing helpful. axes, which is rather nice too. A box filled with a variety of whips and floggers. A set of collars of various sizes. Chains, handcuffs, shackles. A collection to rival a prison's. Okay. Sickle of Falter. Composite longbow and a masterwork scimitar. I don't think I want to bother with the studded leather. Actually, I will bother with the studded leather because I think Wolgif can use that. Well, I already had one. Does it reduce your speed? No, it doesn't. But that means we can give the bracers of armor to someone else, like... Um, plus two is not enough. Nenio, have these. And there's another recipe for us to copy. If I don't do it right away, I'll forget it. That should be that part of the house. Okay, so this room I know contains combat. I don't remember how many are in here. Oh, together me? we stand. Lead on. Ask nicely. Rely on me. Send her in first. Her she quickens. There's a Cambion over there. Getting those sneak attacks are very, very useful. Oh, 
I suppose there's much you can do from there, so let's move you there. You're irrelevant. Let's try this way. Survive me. There we go. Grab the breastplate. Okay, let's uh, rummage around a bit here. Should be a lot of books in this library. Shall we read them all? That's it. Okay, let's read those books before we do anything else, because we might get some uh, skills from them. And you guys can read uh, if you just pause. Wally should read this one in particular. should be it. None of them taught us anything. The door to the garden is blocked. Opening it is currently impossible. is not far. No reason to pause. I'm always open to ideas. Time's not waiting. <sighs> Don't mind me. Always be ready for the worst. I heed the voice of the spirits. We will win this war. Should be a demon up a there. A bright future awaits us. There's also a trap there. Um, Something Jeff, can wrong. You... This is my kind of work. Thank you. Fine. Together we stand. Very careful when we sneak into the room, please. For inviting My me on restless. this journey, I'm all ears. risking life and limb, facing countless dangers. You are my favorite. Oh. Open your heart to me. <laughs> Perhaps I should. I'm pretty no sure mistakes. there's someone in here. <laughs> I'll go ahead. Apparently, I was wrong. Sophisticated instruments of torture. The purpose of some of them can only be guessed at. Mr. Gwurm has some interesting uh, hobbies, it would seem. I guess they're in here. What's on your mind? I wonder. Doubt is the heart's greatest challenge. Well? <laughs> Uh, you can charge him. This Shoot him. Hurt. You can charge him. I'll remove this obstacle. I don't think you can charge the because uh, Bethab is blade. in the way. You are today's sacrifice. Time to share your treasures. <laughs> 
Icy PC Lemon Squeezy. Seventy-five percent. Uh, let's use an apprentice lockpick on that. I hope you appreciate this. Silver robe grants the wearer a plus one bonus to all saving throws against fear effects. Of all is that a chest item? No idea where it even went. Yeah, I think it's a chest item. I don't mind uh, Caledon having a little bit of extra save against uh, fear. Although it's worth. Nah, it's just worth 300, so. Heavy blunt object was clearly used to, tr used to try to break down the door. The lock is broken and the door cannot be opened. This door is locked by some unusual or magical means. There is no lock to be seen. Who? Oh, me? Rely on me. You can trust me. Hmm? You know what, Camellia? I on the goal. really don't I'm trust you. Out. I'll watch your back. Ask nicely. Now, there's no point in using. Uh, we will win this war. Uh, a Lan. A lizard and a human enter a tavern. What'll it be, Lan? The bartender asks. <laughs> Should be another one over here. Mind over muscle. A calculated risk. Will saving throw succeed? Can you attack through the wall? Cover me, all right? Oh no, the, the this is a bug, uh, which is rather annoying. If you're in turn-based mode, you can't cross door steps. Not that it's a big problem. This should do it. You can easily fix the bug by just leaving uh, or obstacle. turning off the uh, turn-based mode, and then you're perfectly allowed to to cross the threshold of the door. So it's not anything game-breaking, but I wish they fixed it. It also seems to be very randomly appearing. Scari and Baphomet cultist. I can. Make every strike count. Let's try this way. You're irrelevant. Go for their heart. Hmm, that was effective. Missed me. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Why are we still in combat? Oh, there's a ranger here as well. I'll cut you wide open. Distract them for me. You won't survive me. Well, he's not here anymore. Doubt any of these are masterworks, so I'll take the breastplates though. And there's this room. I know the way. Our victory is certain. 
This guy, I think, is a uh, leader. There's a ranger over there. Uh, Lan. Endure this. This will hurt. Can you charge him? No, but Time you can go tank. You missed. How dare you? Yeah. The spirits demand your blood. The light take you. Uh, let's blind him. Well, we missed. It was worth the attempt, though. Make every strike count. A calculated risk. Cover me, all right. Go. So he has two masterwork kukris and a regular chain shirt. We'll take that as well, I suppose. And the Cambion Ranger. Some no reason to pause. Gems. Follow my lead. Scrolls. Some of them rather high level. Stone skin and displacement. This room should also contain some demons. Let's prove their logic is lacking. Um, there is an Abricandilu over there. Or Abricandilu, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, move there. This should do it. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Mind over muscle. I doubt I can uh, charge him because there's a table in the way. Again? Oh, there's a babao there as well, huh? Stab you as ask you. Why not both? That's a full action. Let's use that. You are today's sacrifice. Let's try this way. You won't survive me. It's not much I can do with that. Can I blind it? I can, but I fail to overcome the spell resistance, which honestly is not that Into big of a surprise. Oh, it deals acid damage to anyone who attacks it. Distract them from me. Tactical retreat. No. Yeah, that thing does damage. That's for sure. Go for their heart. Not that I'm too worried about it, since it's already dead. Hurt. Endure this. I'll remove this obstacle. There we go. Um, Don't mind me. How about you? You know. Do that. Good, good, good. Take that, and there's something. There's a trap on that one. Interesting. I am helpful, am I not? The short bow of code. That is not far. Just roaming around to see if there's anything hidden. is locked. Okay, let's uh, light up a signal for Mr. Gurm. The mansion is clear. You're alive. Fine work. Actually gives praise out. Who would have thought? My secret door remains unopened. 
Fantastic. I wasn't too late. If you'll uh, follow me. Family secret is about to be revealed. It is so thrilling. You know of family secrets, Kanalia. A happy family. Orgus, an unknown half-elf, and their dark-haired young daughter. The painting is captioned. Orgus Worm, Iris, and Camellia. The paintings are right where I left them. Very good. Orgus Worm thanks you for your help. There is something off about the paintings in front of you. Uh, the blonde-haired bo blonde boy in the Gurm family colors does not look like Horgus in the least. The family portrait depicts Horgus alongside an unknown half-elf woman and a little girl who bears a striking resemblance to Camellia. Who's that in the paintings, Horgus? So, you've noticed. It seems there no point, there's no point in hiding it anymore. Orgus is silent for a few moments, then sighs and presses his lips into a hard line. You see, I have two secrets. Camellia is, in fact, my daughter, and I am not the real Horgus Gworm. You're not Horgus Gworm? My real name is Darian Witt. My parents were the servants of the real Worms at their mansion on the eastern end edge of Mendev. The Gorms were generous and noble, but short-sighted. They burned through most of their fortune on charity, when instead they should have taken better care of guarding the mansion. When I was ten or so, I used to play in the garden with a real Horgus Worm who was just my age. I have no idea where the demons came from. Horgus ran to the mansion and I bought it in the opposite direction. He was captured and killed and I wasn't. Orgus shrugs apologetically. Crusaders came from the nearest city to aid us, but I was the only one who survived. They asked me my name, and I said I was Horgus Worm. That's the whole story. Such a heart-wrenching tale. It never fails to bring tears to my eyes. You are in no position to judge me, Camellia. Orgus's hands curl into fists, but his voice sounds more tired than angry. You're right, I'm not. What you've been doing is wrong. People deserve to know the truth. What good will the truth do anyone? Who will it help? Orgus Gwurm is long dead, as is his entire family. Believe me, if there, was on, if there was one Gworm left alive somewhere, I would immediately hand over the entire estate. You committed a crime, and since then you have tried to atone, but let me guess. No matter how much good you do, the guilt stays with you? It's true. How do you know this? I also made a mistake as a child. Mine was much more serious than yours, in deed and in consequences. Many years passed before I learned to be at peace with it, so I am in no position to judge you. It is difficult for me to speak openly about secrets which I have kept all these years. I have been hostage to them my entire life. Strange as that sounds. Camellia is not... Camellia is your daughter. Yes. Illegitimate, that is to say, Orgus's cheeks redden. She has resided in this house since birth. But the staff thought she is, was a niece or the daughter of a friend who died in the Crusades. I never disabused them of their notions. Her mother, Iris, was a half-elf of humble origins. She worked in the gardens here. I wanted to uh, unite the Gorm family with another noble line. The Gworm name could not be permitted to mix with commoners and thereby plunge into insignificance. Iris did not protest and we successfully hid our connection. And when Camellia was born, I did not claim her as my own. As far as Mendem knows, Camellia is the daughter of a Gworm family servant who died over ten years ago. 
And before you start telling me what a terrible father I am, I want to tell you something. My daughter wanted for nothing. All her whims were fulfilled as quickly as they arose. I'd hired the best teachers and bought her the best books. She always ate well and had warm clothes. Isn't that what a parent does? You did, you've discovered my most terrible secret. Father cares so much about the Gurum name that he raised me in our mansion, hiding me away from the whole world. I'll always be grateful to my father for everything he's done for me, even if Mendev's society disapproves of some of his decisions. Would it be insolent of me to beg for your discretion regarding what you know about us? Aren't you afraid I'll tell everyone your secret? Are you threatening me? Red blotches instantly appear on Horgus's face. I'm not afraid. After today, you won't have a shred of proof. Who will people believe? A noble citizen of Canabras or a mercenary blow-in? I would ask that you keep the secrets of the Grom family in confidence. I would hate to end our fledgling friendship over this. What's it like to live your whole life under someone else's name? When I was a boy, I used to hate Horgus. The condescension most of all, the pity on his face, his smile when he called me to join him in his games. The difference in our birthright wasn't fair. Envy clouded my mind. When the demons killed him and not me, I thought it was a gift of fate. I seized my good fortune with both hands and never let go. When I told them my name was Horgus Gwyrm, the only heir to the vast fortune of the Gwyrm family. On that day, life was fair. Unfortunately, it took me many years to see the generosity behind the condescension and feel the compassion behind the pity. I discovered far too late that Horgus was my friend, even when I didn't feel him myself his. I never accepted the hand of friendship he offered until it was far too late. But now, what can I do? Reveal the truth? Reject the name and allow it to sink into oblivion? Would my friend Horgus want this? Horgus shakes his head, tired. I bear the name of Horgus Worm with the pride and dignity it deserves. As a banner on a battlefield, I will multiply its merits. The Worm family will not be forgotten. I still serve Horgus Worm. Horgus attempts a smile, but the result is pathetic. What are you planning to do now? Well, first and foremost, I shall reward you handsomely for your help. And then, I shall burn these portraits. I have kept them all this time out of some misplaced sentiment. But they serve no purpose now. My ravaged home will likely be picked to the bone, and this secret room will inevitably be discovered. I don't want these paintings to be seen by anyone else. I see. Well, you certainly earned your payment. Here, it was a pleasure doing business with you. Orgus is silent for a while. Camellia, I can tell from your face that you enjoyed fighting the demons in this worthy party. I only ask one thing. Are you certain? Camellia doesn't answer, but looks at Horgus with a half-smile lingering on her lips. Well then, clearly I can no longer keep you safe. Our house is destroyed, our servants scattered or dead. Horgus stares into his daughter's face as though he is seeking the answer to an unasked question. Then he turns his attention to you. But now, follow me. We'll make sure that no one ever again discovers, discovers the secrets of Orgus Worm. Not. I am helpful, am I not? A breastplate plus one. I'm that would be suitable for uh, our good friend Sila. Doesn't help much with her speed, but something. Yeah, that, that 
that's actually I wonder about that short bow. Might be able to put that on the uh, other uh, the Arcanist. Scorched frames and burned canvases. No one will ever know what these paintings showed. Well, that's that then. Thank you for your help, farewell, and uh, watch over Camellia. So I think we have uh, been through all we want to go through here. It should all be regular daggers, uh, which is a bit of a shame. There will be plenty of daggers later on though, but I think I'll take all of these studded leathers because they are worth a little bit of money. These are only worth Um, can go there, just pick up some ingredients. And then we are going to head back to the uh, Defender's Heart. Because I don't want Camellia in our party, I want Darren. I've seen a few random encounters. None, actually. That is a surprise. Okay, let's uh, quickly have a look at uh, the, uh, the count and uh, how we are going to level him up. He's going to be a pure oracle. Now, Darren has a very annoying little thing. The, the oracles are the cleric equivalent of a sorcerer for a wizard. I.e. a sorcerer is a spontaneous caster who has a small selection of spells with a high amount or higher amount of spells per day than a wizard does. Um, it is not that many spell slots, but I prefer the sorcerers over the wizards. Um, when it comes to clerics versus oracles, clerics are usually better than uh, than uh, oracles, but um, Darren is such a, a lovely fellow. The annoying thing about the oracle is that they have a curse, and you can't really get rid of that. So they, they get one benefit, but they also get a curse. Now, Darren's curse is powerless prophecy. You are forewarned of danger, but you can't act to prevent it. You gain uncanny dodge as the rogue class feature, which means that uh, you can react to danger before your senses would normally allow you to do so. You cannot be cat cannot be caught flat-footed, and you do not lose your dexterity bonus to your armor class if the attacker is invisible. But you lose it if you're immobilized, but that's a different matter. Now at the fifth level, uh, the thing is, you are staggered for the entire first round of combat, and for some reason, this has been a bug since they released the game, for Darren, or with this one, you're actually staggered for two rounds of combat. Uh, I'm not sure if it might be because you are caught flat-footed, and that is an additional round of staggered. But at the 5th level, level you'll gain a plus 4 insight bonus on initiative checks, which is nice. 10th level, you gain improved uncanny dodge as the rogue ability. 
And at 15th level, you gain another 4 insight bonus to all saving throws and your armor class during the first round of combat. So, it's, uh, ish. Decent. He has pretty, pretty nice stats, this Count Darren. He, he can't carry anything for, uh, the life of him because, uh, Muscles, that's not his forte. However, we will give him uh, Charisma. As for his skills, it would be Persuasion, Knowledge Arcana, and Knowledge World. And for his first spell, we are going to give him Bull's Strength. He already has spells, of course, but that is his first level two spells. And I think that we can sell a couple of things over at the vendor here. If you know who's who in the city, maybe you can tell me something about Count Arende. I'll tell you, why not? Everyone knows the story, you see, but you could say that I'm the one who found it in a way. The Arendes are a very wealthy and ancient line, and they hail from the outlying areas of Canabras. That's where the Arende family seat is, along with their ancestral lands. In the past, if Mendev was ever feuding with Sarkoris or some clan from there was causing trouble, the Count and Countess Arende were the ones who would defend the border with their soldiers. Their main residence was called Heaven's Edge. It still stands to this day, north of here, on the road toward Dresden, but no one lives there now. Around ten or so years ago, there was a grand celebration held at the estate. The mother and the guardian of the current count invited the great and the good to celebrate his birthday. The entire Arende clan was there, as well as many other nobles, and then, without warning, the demons struck. Clearly, they couldn't ignore such a perfect opportunity to cut down so many of Mendev's great dynasties in one fell swoop. There was even a chance that the queen herself would make an appearance, for she was related to the count as well. Well, when no news came from the estate, a troop of inquisitors was sent to investigate. They forced open the gates and discovered a manor full of corpses. They all perished, Joran says sorrowfully. The servants, the guards, the guests, including some of Iomede's chosen clerics and paladins. The demons had unleashed a magical plague, terrifying and strange, the likes of which hadn't been seen before or since. And among all of this was young Darren Arende only survivor. The Count had a talent for divine magic since his youth, healing magic in particular, and that must be why he didn't die along with the rest. He couldn't explain how he survived the disease. I saw him that day when they brought him into the city, pale and barely conscious of his surroundings. So, that's the story. Since then, Heaven's Edge has stood abandoned, sealed off to the outside world. People are still afraid to go near the place. A bit of a background story of uh, Count Arende. I'd like to retain one of these. Bardish, I think I might keep that. And I'll also sell the Sickle of Falter, because that is really needed at all. As for armors, we'll sell the Banded Mail, the Breastplate, and the Chain Shirt, and the Studded Leathers. These we will sell inside, together with all these uh, other things, so deal. Ready for anything? However, I think I can sell those items uh, off camera. We'll uh, start out the uh, next episode by taking a short nap before we head out into the city again. So, if you have any questions and or comments, then please do feel free to leave those in the comment section. But for now, thank you all so very much for joining me. 
I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope to see you all in the next one.